Hey YouTube, this is Nash Taters. Welcome back to another episode of War of Divisions. Now today, I want to talk about the flip side to the video I made yesterday. And that is, what's life going to be like if you have Warrior of Light? Let's get it started. So, if you decided to summon for Warrior of Light and you got him and you decided to build him, well, congratulations. And for those of you who passed or perhaps didn't get him, I apologize for those who didn't get him. But for those of you who passed, I think you didn't really make a bad move at all. This is also a good opportunity for me to kind of go over somewhat what my account looks like and what my future plans are for this account, which I spent a few bucks here and there. As you can see, I did manage to completely build my Warrior of Light, and I, there was a lot of times where I was very frustrated because I simply just couldn't trigger a shard to show up in the shop. But at the end of the day, it did come through. I was able to get 10 shards the day before it ended, and that was the last 10 I needed. And then of course, they gave me another 10 shards just kind of like throw it in my face. But nevertheless, I'm done with him. I'm quite happy with his result. And he's just simply amazing for me. And I already started finishing off his jobs. And I just need to do this. And he should be done with six more shards of the uh, elemental Elksis. Elk? Elksis. Whatever it's called. Too many names to remember in this game, to be honest. But uh, here are the units that I'm working on. Yerma is quickly becoming one of the most powerful units in the game for me. I just need 21 more shards and she'll be fully limit broken. And I used her in the raid, and she did really well. She did tons of damage. And the fact that she's a slash attacker really helped get some of my chains going. Grace, as you can see, is pretty much my go-to healer, really, because I don't have any of the other healers um, that I want to build. Um, actually, I do not own Ayaka, which is my number one current unit now, since I've gotten all the units that I want. Uh, I'm slowly actually starting to farm her shard, and I want to get her to be fully 99 as soon as possible, basically. She's going to be my go-to unit for all future purposes of support slash healing. The next unit I want to work on, of course, is Rain. Now, I personally feel like Warrior of Light is really strong against magical attacks if you build him that way. But he can also innately be strong against physical attacks because of all the defense abilities that he gets. So, therefore, I think ideally I want another Tang that can really take some hits for magic. Thing is though, everyone talks about magical tang, physical tang, yada yada yada, but there is no actual situations in the game that I believe, other than perhaps PvP, that you really need to concentrate on one or the other. Generally speaking, most maps that they give us or present to us will be dealing with physical attackers and magical attackers. So I think ideally you just need tanks in general and not so much trying to really push for anything specific. So as you can see, I'm a little bit far off to get him, let me break on five, but uh, he's gonna be my main focus in terms of getting my next tank up. Next one is gonna be Ziza. Now, of course, she has one of the best trust masters in the game. It solves pretty much the issue of having being AP hungry, especially early in the battles. Uh, for me, once she, she is able to be limit broken five and I will probably awaken her fully. I will definitely use her, but unfortunately strike damage in this game is pretty weak. And in general, I don't think she's a unit I'll be taking a battle in terms of damage. She'll be a really good supporter though. I think I'm gonna use her probably for Thief, for specific uh, Steel Heart slash Steel Time, and then main monking, main monking, huh? Okay, main monking for a little bit of extra damage. And then of course for some reviving, uh, maybe some overall supporting as well. The last unit, of course, is currently the bread and butter of War of Divisions, believe it or not. If you take a look at the logo, Gilgamesh is actually the, 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 the poster boy for this game. I've been farming his shard every single day. I was lucky enough to get a, a duplicate copy of him for one of the free pools months ago, and so therefore I'm kind of decently high on limit breaking him. I think, honestly, I want to get him to level 89 and then casually take my time to get him to 99. As uh, they rank him really high, but they don't really put him in the top five of anything specific. So 
I'm not really sure where he stands in terms of why they rank him so high, but he's very fast, very powerful indeed. In one of my previous arena videos, he did two consecutive moves of his, of his Excalibur attack. And it uh, goes without saying, that unit died very fast. So I, I look forward to maybe uh, building him maybe by, maybe by maybe March. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Overall, I have Orlando as my main attacker. I have Mediana as my main magical attacker. I did finish Gefgarion. He's my main Dark Slasher. Of course, my main tanks is going to be Warrior Blight, of course, then followed by Rain. I do have uh, Salir, which I'm not trying to finish her off just yet. I think what I'm going to do is just buy the shards if I see them in the shop. But uh, maybe once I get Grace to Limit Break 4, I'll go ahead and jump back to her and get her finish as possible. I do find her that she's quite squishy. Very, very squishy. And uh, so, yeah, she's a powerhouse in damage, but being squishy in this game is not a good idea. That's why I always lean more towards tanks. Of course, I have Ramza, which I hope to finish. And of course, we talk about Yerma. Of course, I have Zazan as my uh, main source of Steel Hearts right now. And then some other units I want to work on in the future would be actually this guy. He's actually really, really good. I think I'm going to do a review video to continue my SR review series. So look forward to that soon. And then, of course, I have Murmur that is on her way up as well. I think I will get her done as soon as I start finishing Grace. And then in terms of URs, actually, you know what? Let's just go and do this and show you how many URs I have. Now, you shouldn't measure one's account based on how many URs you own because that's a terrible way to do it because unless you're a whale, you probably have this entire stash of URs built, all 99s. But for the average folk, having this many UR doesn't mean anything, to be quite honest. You should be gauging and measuring your account based on how many actual leveled up units, maxed out units you have. And that's a be much better way to actually uh, show people how well or how well built your account is. Now, I did get Victoria from the free summons. I also got Engelbert. I also got Whisper. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of nice units from the free pulls. And so personally, I think going forward in the future, I do want to build Victoria as another attacker. Uh, as you can see, I have actually every UR tank in the game. Boom, 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 and boom. And then, of course, I actually have all the MR tanks as well. So I have every tank in the game, which is what I've been asking for. So I'm quite happy about that. And then, of course, I want to build Miranda. She supplements Warrior Life really well because she's a heavy magical damager. And on top of it, her support abilities are really solid uh, as a unit that's just kind of like following behind Warrior Life. Imagine like she is like a flamethrower in a, in a World War II times. And she's walking behind this tank which is absorbing all the, the, you know, the hits from enemy units. And as soon as she gets in range, boom, flamethrower, boom, everyone's dead. So yeah, very powerful unit. Of course, I now have Whisper on both accounts. So I think I'm gonna slowly work on her, not too heavy emphasizing on her because I do have Warrior of Light and Rain to work on. But on my free to play account, I'll definitely be working on Whisper as my one of my main tanks. Engelbert will be slowly rising as well because I think he's a really solid physical tank. And so I think having all access to all these tanks, especially the fact they're all from different elements, is going to be really good uh, going into the future. Uh, I do hope to finish all these other URs probably in the next year, maybe five, you know, we'll see how all that goes. But I'm a huge fan of Pierce, and uh, eventually I would like to have these piercing units up and running. And that's going to be something really that's going to be powerful in Japan. Actually, it's going on right now because of Kane. And so that's my future plan. I already mapped it out for myself. Uh, I don't plan to summon for any units in this game unless they are specifically limited time. And the reason being is I've gotten lucky enough to get many units in this game without having to worry about summoning them. And the best time to build a unit is when they're featured during the initial release. And I don't plan on spending that much cash on this game. So for me, it's not really worth it. And besides, I already have some of the most powerful units you know, according to most people's tier lists, yada, 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 which I hate to talk about, but it is true. A lot of these units I have are considered to be, you know, a better versions of a lot of the uh, attackers or healers, or whatever in the game. So I think once I get Ayaka and get her to 99, pretty much my roster is kind of banged out for the next year or two, believe it or not. I just have so many units to work on. And I think going forward, when Final Fantasy Tactics 2 rolls around, I would like to get Agrius, of course. 
and I would love to get Mustadio. If I get Delita, he'll be sitting in the bench, to be honest. And then, of course, Final Fantasy IV or Final Fantasy XIV Return, I will ignore Thancred. To me, he's a redundancy, right? You don't really need him. And But Final Fantasy IV is where, where it starts to shine again. I think Kane looks cool as hell. And he's a super, super badass attacker. And he's a piercing unit. So I think I'll definitely go for Kane. And I'm not really sure, obviously, further down the road, because we're not that far ahead. But in terms of MR, as you can see, I have Dario, and uh, and I have Nasha. And of course, I'm not going to build any of these units. You know, it's just you simply don't have the resources to do it right now. Again, year down the road, you probably build them all up. And I think that's pretty much it. Now, I know there's Kido Fei, there's the Mathematician Girl come in, big whoopity whoop whoop. You know, it's not a really big deal. They don't define anything. People are going to say, yeah, there's a meta coming of magic, but there's no such thing as a meta because everything rotates out every week or so. So, of course, you're going to have tons of magical attackers. Believe it or not, we already had lots of magical attackers that would be considered quote-unquote meta, right? Mediana, Miranda, Salir. That's enough to create a meta in its own right. Of Gunners, was that really a thing? I don't know. Strikes, though, for I'm pretty sure it will never be considered something a lot of people are going to run a lot of. Piercing in the future, perhaps. But tanks, healers, damagers, those three categories will always be around, no matter what, how you look at it. And, and not everyone has the flexibility to roll every single unit that comes out and therefore starts playing with the flavor of the week, as I like to call it. Not everyone has that luxury. So personally, I think just play the game how it is designed. Build the units that you have instead of dreaming about the ones you don't. Just like in real life. Don't dream about that Lambo if you don't have a job that can pay for it. You know, don't dream about all those supermodels you can date or all those super hunky guys that you want to date because that's not realistic. So if you're looking for love, love the ones that you have already in your monster box. Don't love the ones that you don't own. I think that's the only thing I can think of to, to tell people if, if planning is something they want to do. But that doesn't shouldn't that discourage you from actual planning to get certain units. Because at the end of the day, if you're saving enough, you just increase your chance of getting said unit. And for me, as you can see, I'm staring at 20,000. If everything goes smoothly, probably in a month, Final Fantasy Tactics 2 will come out, and I will definitely go after Agrius, and I'll try to save up maybe 40,000 for her, and then hopefully I can get her built. And right now, I will also suggest start saving your skip tickets. If you have the time, just go ahead and manual, or not manual, but auto everything instead of just skip, skipping tickets on things. Because you want to ideally use skip tickets on special events like Final Fantasy Tactics. I spent probably like 400 skip tickets on Warrior of Light to try to trigger the Whimsy Shop. It was annoying. It really was. But uh, yeah, that's the biggest advice that I can give in terms of farming for specific shards. So I think that's all the time I have for this video. I think life with Warrior of Light or without, it's pretty much the same in terms of if you planned it. You know what I'm saying? And don't worry too much about it if you don't have them. You know, you can have other options to tank. You have Engelbert, you have Rain, you have Whisper, you have Mont, you have Dario. If you don't have Warrior of Light, use any of those and you should be fine in terms of progressing. You can beat the new challenge without having to have Warrior of Light. It's just a matter of making sure your, your units are actually well built. Your vision cards are updated and your armor sets are, you know, nicely polished off. Overall, it's not really more or less relying on units. It's more or less relying on your strategies and your planning. So, as always, take care of yourself, your others, and loved ones. Thank you for watching. And Nash Taters and his friends out.